CBS Eye on Health. Overcoming Hurdles to Healthy Motherhood with Darius Chisholm. Welcome back to CBS Eye on Health. We've been talking with Gevany Williams, who was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer during her pregnancy that put both her and her baby at risk. Now joining us is Dr. Suzanne Schiffman, a surgical oncology expert at Allegheny Health Network and a key member of Gevany's care team. So, of course, this we leave off talking about just how scary it is to be diagnosed with cancer. So, doctor, if you could tell us the type of cancer that she had and why is it so rare? Well, goblet cell carcinoid is generally a tumor found in the appendix. It is very, very rare. The incidence is about one to two, one to two patients in two million, so extremely rare. Very rare, and in this case, you found it as a result of the surgery that she had. Exactly, yeah. and actually that's a very common way to find it. I would say 95% of these tumors are diagnosed post-operatively, so they generally do present with appendicitis, and then after the surgery, we find it in the pathology report. So as you get to know more about this rare cancer and, of course, how doctors found it, what are your thoughts now, Gevany? Well, it was, it was a, a little bit lonely because you couldn't just Google goblet cell carcinoid and find all this information or these studies. Um, there wasn't tons of info out there, so really I relied on Dr. Schiffman a lot to, to fill me in and tell me what the best course of treatment would be. And her types of questions to you, I would assume, were how do I protect my baby? How do I continue to have a healthy pregnancy? And, and how does one do that with this rare cancer? We both knew that we were dealing with two patients, so both Gevany and the baby were very, very much in the foremost you know, of our minds. Um, we knew that we wanted to make sure that we could safely deliver a baby while also offering optimal treatment for goblet cell carcinoid. With goblet cell carcinoid, the, uh, the primary treatment is surgical. So generally we start with surgery and kind of make our treatment plan based on the pathology results. Um, as Gevany mentioned earlier, the second trimester is the optimal time to do something like an appendectomy or to do surgery, but you know, now we're talking about more major surgery, and this was not a surgery we could do while she was still pregnant. And I want to talk a little bit more about that plan and the other doctors that were involved with making sure that in this very sensitive state that, that you do this surgery. But before we do that, it would occur to me at this moment how, what is going on? And I would assume that your husband and your family felt the same way. We just came off surgery, now we determine there's cancer, and we now have to face a, another surgery. What was that like for you? Yeah, it was, it, was, it was very hard because I wanted to be here and a mom to Dax, but I also didn't want him to, you know, have any repercussions because I was sick. Um, I always felt like he didn't ask for any of this, any of what was going on. So I wanted him well taken care of. And well taken care of he was. You all put together a very extensive team. Tell us about the team and their roles and why each of those uh, specialties were involved in her care and Dax's care. We had a fantastic team, so I would say my partner through all of this was Dr. Tom Krivak. He is the head of the gyne Onc department at AHN. Um, Dr. Tom Zick called me the first day that he got this pathology report. I think it was the morning of when he was going to be seeing Gevany and telling her the pathology results. We very quickly got her in to see me the next day. I made the phone call to Dr. Krivak. We compiled a team of um, OBGYNs, so Dr. Sober and Dr. Gallagher maternal fetal medicine, Dr. Thomas, and then also we consulted Dr. Dula Manga for medical oncology to make sure that she was okay with the first treatment being surgical, followed by assessing if she would require any additional treatments in the form of chemotherapy or radiation down the road. And how far along was she in her pregnancy at this point? We met at 24 weeks. So this now is taking us in 26, 27 weeks, still very much in this fragile time period. Absolutely, and that was one of the questions we had for maternal fetal medicine is, you know, what is the earliest that we can deliver Dax, have a healthy, healthy baby, but also, you know, expedite things so we can get Gevany the treatment that she needs. Is that the reason why the team was formed so quickly and you moved so quickly? Absolutely, you know, with any type of cancer, time is of the essence. Um, what we were dealing with right now, we believed that she was 
earlier staged based on the size of the tumor and based on the location, but she had perforated, so we know that there was a high chance that she had spilled tumor cells into her abdominal cavity. So no time to waste here. Exactly. We wanted to move things forward. We wanted to get a treatment plan in place and, and you know, start taking care of her while also keeping in mind that we wanted a healthy baby. And so then what was that plan? That's a great question. So our plan was to uh, deliver via C-section at 32 weeks. That was the absolute earliest the doctors felt it was acceptable to deliver. Thankfully, everything went fantastic, and Dax did wonderfully, and Gevany did wonderfully. And after that, we set her up for a staging CT scan two weeks following her C-section, followed by the surgery. Now, the surgery was very extensive. It entailed tumor debulking, which is removing all of the tumor that we can see and feel. We removed her right colon. The appendix comes off of the right colon, so that is generally a part of staging and treatment of a goblet cell carcinoid tumor. We also removed the lining of her abdominal wall and everything surrounding where that perforation uh, may have affected. Uh, then we perfused her with chemotherapy for 100 minutes. At the conclusion, we washed out the chemotherapy and closed her up and uh, got her to recovery. Now, I assume they discussed this plan with you in the beginning. Yes, And yes. what were you thinking? <laughs> Well, I, I knew that it was very involved, um, but Dr. Schiffman has a wonderful team around her and they prepared me for what I needed to do to recover, what I needed to do to get well. Um, but they also prepared me that it was, it was gonna be a tough surgery and you know, a bit of a recovery. Mm. And that time period, two weeks after you delivered Dax, was just a little bit of, of enough time for you to prepare for all of this. What were you thinking about, though, as he's now here and you're now going into this major surgery? Yeah, that, that was hard. I thankfully formed great relationships with the doctors and nurses in the NICU where Dax was, um, and they took fabulous care of him, but of course I didn't want to leave him. Um, but, you know, we did FaceTime. I left him a recorded book. You did FaceTime with him. <laughs> Yes, I love it. <laughs> yes, yes. They were wonderful to me. I mean, they, they let me rest easy. And then Dr. Schiffman made sure I got back to the hospital with Dax to recover. So. Mm. We'll talk a little bit more about your recovery uh, in, in the next segment. But what was your thought when you first saw him? Oh, um, when I first saw him, they greeted me with him as a surprise. And it was, it was wonderful. It's, it's probably one of the best moments of my life. It was awesome. And what was your thought, Dr. Schiff? So that was one of the things that we, that was important to us going into the surgery is we wanted to get her from Allegheny General Hospital, which is where we do the, the HIPEX, to West Penn as soon as possible. So after she was medically fit, I think it was about three days, probably two and a half, three days, we arranged for transfer and that was not an easy feat. Um, we had social workers involved, nursing staff, and. And then I, I didn't get to witness it, but I did hear about how the NICU greeted her when she came off the elevator with Dax, and everybody was just so pleased to see you. Yeah, yes. we'll talk about all of the doctors and nurses and staff involved and this procedure, and of course, being in two separate hospitals mm -hmm. through most of that. Um, so we'll get into that in a moment. We've heard about Gevany's delivery and her innovative cancer treatment at Allegheny Health Network. When we return, we'll hear about how Gevany started life as a new mom, balancing her own recovery with her baby Dax's care in the NICU at West Penn Hospital.